Spirit, and let us seek his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only begotten Son to take our nature upon him and to be born of a pure virgin. Grant that we, who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace, may be renewed by your Holy Spirit. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the same Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. have seen a great light. Those who live in the land of darkness, of them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult with the mighty thunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian, for all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son has been given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counsel, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace from the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts 
will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. We'll say together Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the world. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are our idols. But it is the Lord who made the heavens. Oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence. Oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord your families and your peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship to the Lord your community and his voices. Let the whole world your children Lord. Tell it out among the nations. The Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is there. Then shall all the trees of the woods shout for joy before the Lord when he comes. When he comes to judge the earth, he will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his children. A reading from the letter of Paul to Titus. For the grace of God hath appeared, bringing salvation to all training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of the great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purity himself, a people of his own, who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. And so they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. Mary she treasured all these words, and she pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Lord Jesus, fill every heart in the world with your peace this night, and hold us all in the palm of your hand. Amen. Amen. It never ceases to amaze me how off, after all these many Christmases that I've lived through and enjoyed, that there are still parts of the story of our Lord's birth that stir me to wonder so that I leave the manger scene with something new to ponder, something that brings the mystery of the Incarnation closer. The ones on my mind tonight, and I've wondered about them before, but this Christmas I'm pondering the shepherds as being the first ones to visit the manger. The first ones the heavenly envoy sought out, the first ones so far as we know of all the people Waiting for the Messiah, the shepherds were the first ones to hear the good news for all people, that the Savior of the world had been born. Wonder why that was. Good news of great joy needs ears to receive it. An angel of the Lord could have gone to anyone waiting for God's Messiah to deliver this good news, and they would have brimful, been brimful of joy to receive it. But it seems important in Luke's telling the story of our Savior's birth that the first ones to hear this news were shepherds in a nearby field. You know the first horrible sin that humankind committed after their disobedience in the Garden of Eden 
was the murder of a shepherd. Cain was the firstborn son of Adam, a farmer like his father. It was part of God's punishment for Adam's disobedience that he would eat what the ground yielded by the sweat of his brow, and so did Cain. Abel was Adam's youngest son, and he was a shepherd. When it came time for the sons of Adam to make their offerings to God, which was the first tenth of the grain harvest for Cain and the finest unblemished firstborn lamb for Abel, God was pleased with Abel's offering and not with Cain's. Cain was overcome with rage by that and killed his brother. That grieved God's heart. Maybe God favored shepherds from then on. Surely, as the scriptures testify, God's eye was on the shepherds. More often than not, the shepherds we meet in the Bible are the youngest sons of their fathers, not the firstborn sons. Remember when Samuel went to anoint the Lord's choice for Israel's king after removing Saul, Samuel went to Jesse in Bethlehem, who brought his sons out one at a time, beginning with the oldest, but the Lord told Samuel none of them were the one. Then Jesse sent someone out to the fields where David, the youngest, was tending sheep. He was the one the Lord chose to be Israel's new king. The Lord loved David, and the Lord said that David was a man after God's own heart. Moses was the youngest son of Amram. He only became a shepherd after he murdered an Egyptian for killing a Hebrew slave. And on the run from Pharaoh's wrath, ended up in Midian, tending sheep for his father-in-law Jethro. From there, God called Moses to deliver God's people from Egypt and to the Promised Land. God was with him through all that time. Later on, after the, after the destruction of the first temple, when God's people, Israel, were in exile, the prophet Ezekiel delivered the word of the Lord to them, prophesying against the bad shepherd kings who did not seek out the sheep that had been scattered, or heal the sick, or bind up the injured, or feed and tend their flocks. The Lord said through Ezekiel, that the Lord himself would come and rescue his sheep, bring them back to feed in good pastures. He would seek the lost, heal the sick, and bind up the injured. And then, in John's Gospel, the adult Jesus declares, I am the good shepherd, the one Ezekiel spoke about, the one who embodies the heart and mind and will of God. But more than that, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep, and for this reason my Father loves me. I lay down my life for the sheep to take it up again. Shepherds, that is, the ones who know and love their sheep, bind their wounds and tend to their needs, those shepherds embody the loving, caring heart of God for God's people. All this time, I thought about the shepherds visiting newly born Jesus in the manger as representing our journeys to seek Christ and follow the way of Christ with our lives. And I still believe that. But after pondering the shepherds as the first visitors to the manger, knowing that in the Bible, earthly shepherds embody God's heart, though not perfectly as Jesus does, Maybe God appreciated Abel's offering more than Cain's because God recognized God's own heart in the shepherd Abel's heart, the same as God did in the shepherd David's heart. And maybe God recognized it also in the hearts of the shepherds that the angel delivered the good news to in the field. Maybe the shepherds were sent from heaven to be the first ones at the manger to reveal to Mary and Joseph in a way they could perceive the joy in the heart of God at the birth of Jesus. It would be there in the hearts of the shepherds. Mary and Joseph could see all the brightness of heaven in their faces, all the awe and wonder of heaven in their eyes, and they could hear the abounding joy of heaven in the shepherds' voices. That's what Mary kept and pondered in her heart. 
The mystery of the incarnation is more than the union of heaven and earth in Jesus. The reason God took on human flesh was to make God's love for humankind known to the world in a way that we could perceive it as real. That's what Jesus showed us with his life. Now, Jesus is the only one who revealed all the attributes of God, all the love, the generosity, kindness, mercy, protection, providence, and all the rest of it. But now we know that the image of the Creator is found at least in part in creation, in ordinary people like shepherds faithfully tending their sheep, mamas and daddies faithfully parenting their children, teachers faithfully teaching their students. And oh my, if you can't look at the pictures of nurses holding the hands of the dying and not see the heart of God, then you have never seen it. I don't know exactly what the secular message of Christmas means when it flashes the word believe, all glittery against a dark sky, attached, unattached to any other words, with fairies floating around and all. It's intentionally nebulous, but for us, Christmas reminds us that the proof that God, the maker of all that is, wanted to be with humankind in a way that we could perceive happened when Christ was born. And because it did, God continues to be in the world God loves, in people like you and me and strangers we meet on the way, I say, believe that and ponder everything. Merry Christmas. Let us pray to our incarnate Lord who has brought us out of darkness and into his own marvelous light. Christ born for us, Son of God given for us, help us to know you, to worship you, and to serve you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our prayer. Wonderful Counselor, you order all things with your wisdom. Help the church to reveal the mystery of your love and fill her with the spirit of truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, the government is on your shoulders. Guide the leaders of the nations and bring in your kingdom of justice and righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting Father, you call us to live together in unity. Protect by your mercy all your children, bless our families, and renew our communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prince of Peace, you bring reconciliation through the cross. By your healing power, give to all who suffer your gift of wholeness and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Jesus, on this holy night, Heaven has come down to earth, and earth is raised to heaven. Hold in your hand all those who have passed through death in the hope of your coming kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, full of the Spirit, hear our prayers, receive our praises, and fill our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good evening. Merry Christmas again. Thank you for celebrating this uh, wonderful service with us via our YouTube channel. I hope that this is a meaningful service for you and that it just begins. Um, a wonderful celebration of Christmas time, even though it's different than most Christmases we've ever spent together. We miss you all, all being here. We miss this church being full tonight, but um, we carry you all with us in our hearts. So 
we, I feel just as full even on this night, even though we're not all together. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice. Savior and Redeemer of the world. 
In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember, remember his death, death. we proclaim we his resurrection, and we await his Christ. coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Joseph, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Now, send us into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and sinless heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and upon you forever. Amen. Go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.